Today on Susquehanna Express, we're talking with Joanne Darrow, who is the pastor of a new thing church in High Spire, and it is quite a new thing. The new thing that your church is doing is that they're not um, having church services in a typical building with stained glass and a steeple. Instead, you chose something a little bit that's um, more in the community, right in the center. So how did that all come about? As we were looking for a space in the community, having felt strongly called to be in the High Spire, Lower Swatera Township area, kept driving past this building. And at the time, it had a candle shop in it. Okay. Uh, but there was a vacant laundry next to it. And so initially we thought we were going to be tearing out washing machines and dryers for a relatively small space. Uh, turned out that the candle shop didn't last for too very long. And so by the time we were really ready to move forward, this much larger space that had also been a former karate studio <laughs> was open to us. And we were given a wonderful rate for the space and permission to renovate it however we chose. So it was just an ideal situation. It's right on Route 230 and it's right across from a McDonald's and so very visible, very easy to get to and pretty much in the heart of the community. So you broke down some of those barriers that maybe um, people aren't fam who aren't familiar with church are uncomfortable with, with the building setting, but what are some other ways that your church has broken down some of those barriers? Well, one of the things is we don't even call ourselves church. Okay. We call ourselves New Thing Community. Okay. Because the idea is to build the body rather than worrying about the building. And so some of the things that we're doing is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until noon, we are there with coffee and fellowship. We have the televisions on with morning news programs and uh, just an opportunity for folks to come in, check us out. We also have three computers that we were able to get from the computer ministry here. So people in the area who would need to come in and do job resumes or job searches or put in applications are able to do that. We're beginning to build a, a library. There's, there's no library itself in High Spire. Hmm. And so we'll be able to lend books and we're beginning to accumulate books for that. Uh, and so we're, we're just, we're present. Mm -hmm. And because we sit between a laundromat and a dog groomer, <laughs> uh, and right next to the dog groomer is the hardware store, so the, there's a fair amount of traffic right. through that area. Uh, we also have, facing the street, we have a, a screen that runs continuously with all of our upcoming activities and events and our schedule for the week. Oh, that's so neat. it doesn't matter what time of the day or night you would be going by, you can stop and look in and, and read what's going on. Okay. Uh, so, Is that something that the plaza has for all of the businesses that no. are there? Or, okay, that's something no. that you just That was one out. of the things that we chose to do. We, we want to, even if we're not currently on site, mm -hmm. we want folks to be able to see kind of who we are and, and what we're about. So do you, is that how you advertise about the coffee and the library and so we, We've been very blessed. Uh, the community courier that, that come, goes to every household in the neighborhood has been wonderful in publicizing everything that we're doing. And so when we started, they put in the, the coffee time. Uh, they, they've published for our um, back to school breakfast with our backpack giveaway and for both of our free community dinners. Uh, they even put in for our shoebox dedication. And so they've just been wonderful in getting that word out. Plus High Spire has a quarterly newsletter that goes into every household in the borough. And so we are, we've also put articles in the High Spire Herald so that everybody gets to see you know, what's coming up and what we're doing. And, and it's been really wonderful because we know that those make it into every household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but they don't charge us to put anything in them. <laughs> And well, so that, that, it is because that allows resources to go other places rather than for promotion. Mm -hmm. so. so have you felt that a lot of those um, outreach opportunities have been successful with getting people to come to the church services? So far the, the, the best one has been, was our second community dinner. And of course we had been there a little longer. We're 14 weeks old in the community. Okay. In a community that's not used to gravitating to a church. Mm -hmm or even to church activities and events. Uh, we had 50 children that came to our first trunk or treat. Oh, wow. Um, and then we had about 65 that were at our second community dinner. And so people are beginning to know that we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've had a sign at the road that's not there all the time, but that's there to highlight events and activities that are coming up. And, and that seems to be drawing people in when you ask you know, how they came because we have event registration cards. 
-hmm. and so how did you hear about this? And the, the three most often are the sign or one of the two publications. So that's really been a blessing in bringing folks in. And then the folks who just happen in, uh, it, because as funny as it sounds, there's no restroom in the laundry, in okay. the laundromat. Uh, and so uh, it's, an, it's an amazing conversation starter. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but it, you know, another good reason to be there. So what so. are some of the ways um, that you nurture those people that do just happen to come in from the laundromat or so forth that maybe aren't churched? Well, it, the, obviously the first thing is to engage them in conversation and to have them be willing to converse with us for more than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also make sure that they have information about what's coming up. Uh, there have been several times when we've had the opportunity to pray with folks who have come in as, as they've begun pretty readily to open up. It's a very comfortable space because when it's not set up for worship, then we have four round tables. So it's set up more cafe style. Okay. We have a hospitality area where the coffee maker is and usually there are some snacks out. And, and so we, we've set it up to not even look like church, mm -hmm. but to look like just a very welcoming environment for people to come in. What are some tips that you might give someone else that's looking to um, have more uh, community involvement? Because we're so new, the, the thing that we've had to learn is patience. That when you're in a space where nobody has really consistently been for a while, mm -hmm. and on top of that you're doing something unlike anything that's, that's been done in that area, it's going to take time to build your credibility in the community. So we're, we're seeing that now more people are stopping in and the folks who will say, well, my friend was here. Mm -hmm. And so they'll stop in because their friend was there. Word of mouth is the best advertising. It, it really is, yeah. it really is. And so what I would say is patience. Mm -hmm. when, uh, too often, I think we expect things to work instantly. Mm -hmm. And so we give up before it's really had an opportunity. Uh, we, we regularly evaluate what we're doing to see whether or not to continue it because we also don't want to get stuck in that rut where we're doing the same thing 10 years from now that we're doing today. Uh, but there are some things where we're saying, let's be patient with this. 14 weeks is not adequate time to make an evaluation. Uh, so, but we're excited. We, we've developed some wonderful partnerships. We have folks in the community who worship at other places, but who want to be part of what we're doing with the dinners. Mm -hmm. and who wanted to be part of what we were doing with shoeboxes. And so we even had some folks from one of our sister churches who came and helped pack shoeboxes with us. Uh, and so we were really blessed because we dedicated 302 shoeboxes. Wow. And, and to know that that's part of the way we build the body too, is to be connected to one another as well as connecting with the community. Yeah, but, well, it, it sounds like you have a great blend of both innovation as well as um, measuring and see what's really working. Um, so I thank you for taking that step and um, just doing something new. Well, thank you for having me here. You're welcome. So if you would like to see more Susquehanna Express episodes like this, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express.